Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Kami and Karen Go Keto, where we are documenting our transition to a ketogenic lifestyle. Kami, and that's Kami over there. I'm Karen. And today we're just going to have kind of an impromptu discussion about uh, Kami feeling fat and maybe feeling stalled. Kami, you start us off. Okay. Hi, everybody. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Catherine over at Jeff's Gym because the other day she recognized me from being on our YouTube channel and we were just so delighted. I felt like I was famous or something. So, you know, we knew we, I, we feel like we have some people out there following us and going along with our journey. So thank you so much for being there for us. Subscribe, ask questions. We're interested in all of that stuff. So this morning I was talking to Karen and I said, I'm st I feel like I'm stalling out and I'm feeling fat today. Like in the morning when I get up and I look down at my tummy, I can tell like if um, it's feeling like I can almost even tell like by the way I'm feeling and looking at myself, if I'm going to maybe be in ketosis or not. And I'm just not feeling that way lately. And I've been eating, um, you know, pretty much on plan and low keto. And so we said, well, let's just look at my diary, my food diary, which I've been keeping here and kind of go over um, what's been going on with me in my eating. So, um, yeah. So what's it say? So um, I, yesterday I had egg bake with cheese and um, decaf coffee with a little bit of cream. It's a crustless quiche that I make. And um, then um, that was for breakfast. And then for a snack, I had one ounce of cheese wisps, little baked um, cheese wisps and eight macadamia nuts. I kind of ate the macadamia nuts throughout the day, but just charted them eight at a time. I had like four and then four. And then for lunch, I had tuna salad sandwich with avocado on low carb bread. Um, that could be the culprit that's getting in my way as I It is the culprit. It is because you've had the low carb bread like two pieces every day and sometimes four pieces. That's that's the easy find. Okay, yeah. I think you're right as I'm going through this and looking at it because then at night I had uh ribeye steak and in I cooked it in some avocado oil and cauliflower rice that I shredded. Um, and made some cauliflower rice and a little bit of olive oil. And then I didn't do a whole lot of exercise yesterday. I walked three quarters of a mile because um, it was cold outside. But the day before that, I ate four pieces of the low-carb bread right. in the morning. I had talked to you about that, Karen. And one was with peanut butter yeah. and one was with cheese. And the other two were with butter. And the day you know, before... Go ahead. Well, the other thing is, it's probably too many nuts. You know, Maria Emmerich, who is, you know, fan fantastic in the keto um, protein sparing modif modified fast uh, area, carnivore, I think maybe she might eat carnivore, but she's she's got great advice. She's got a great website, great YouTube, great Instagram. She always says, if you feel stalled, look at, you know, give up the nuts. And the nuts, but the bread for you, especially because you know it says low carb, right? But it's not low carb, you've got to do the net carbs. And there are a lot of people in the, in the ketogenic stratosphere that say you can't do the net carbs, you got to do really count the carbs. And if you yeah. count the carbs in that keto bread, your carbs are way up there. They are. I think they're eight carbs. I think it's eight carbs a piece of bread. And then there's five grams, um, eight grams of carbs and five grams of fiber. So they count it as three net carbs per piece. Yeah. But what are the macadamia nuts too? Because if it's three net, even if it's three net carbs and you've got two pieces of bread, that's six in your macadamia nuts. I don't know what those are. Cauliflower, I think, is pretty high. So you're definitely way over your 25 grams. And I ate a lot of cauliflower too. I didn't, um, I didn't measure it. I ate it last night, and I ate it the night before. And the night before, I did not measure it, and it was a lot. 
there was like almost there was just a little bit left and it wasn't like enough to put it wasn't enough to like you know save but i didn't want to throw it out so i ate it i should have just tossed it or saved it (laughs) yeah yeah all right so um i won't eat the bread today this morning i have planned for breakfast um another ribeye ribeye steak which i got at aldi's and it was um grass fed and it was phenomenal uh, yeah their ribeyes are great there for like 13 bucks they're they're grass fed or they're non-grass fed somewhere between 11 dollars and 49 cents to 13 dollars and 49 cents and they're really good yeah it was fabulous i loved it and i'm not a huge fan of of meat i have to say and it had fat on it and it was tasty and Mm -hmm. i think it's right so um, this morning, I'm going to be making some of my homemade blue cheese dressing, which is also phenomenal. And, you know, I am doing the right thing as far as eating at home and eating the foods that I'm cooking, because then that way I know what's in them and they're right. not hiding sugar. That's the other thing I'm really doing, watching. I'm on the Quit Sugar Summit right now, and it's phenomenal. The speakers are incredible. You can go there. You can listen to the speakers for dollars to keep. Um, the speakers in your library and they're very good and that's at quit sugar summit.com so shout out there to mike collins and all his guys over there um yeah so um that's the other thing i've been craving sugar too and i talked to you yesterday karen and you you were like well you know why it's because you're talking about sugar all day long and we are talking about sugar all day long so i'm really trying to watch that sugar also. You know, that's the Pavlovian response, right? You hear the word sugar and it's, um, and, you know, especially when you're hearing it every five minutes, maybe in during the summit, I mean, you see it on the, on your screen, it says quit sugar summit. Uh, so it, I think it really could be a trigger to a lot of people, but also it could be bringing stuff up, right? It could be bringing up, oh, wow, I've given that up even hearing other people's stories, because a lot of these people in their stories, they're sharing that they do not eat sugar anymore. You know, especially refined processed sugar, they may eat fruits and vegetables, but they're not eating any, you know, any, any refined sugar. Uh, But a lot of them have given up, I think, fruits and vegetables too. So, you know, anything that has that sweetness can just the thought of it makes you start salivating i'm sure i'm sure the studies are out there that say that so be strong (laughs) i will be and you know they even talk in the um in the quit sugar community about the borderline foods and dairy and nuts happen to be on their borderline foods which i'm not worried about those yet i'm just trying to stay off the sugar but um, I really don't want to give up dairy or nuts. And, you know, so I have to really watch them wisely because uh, I think you're right about the nuts helping me keep weight on. Well, also that um, that carb bread that you're eating, the low carb bread that you're eating, that is a processed food. So that in itself may be, you know, it's definitely refined as far as whatever kind of flours they're using. Um, because basically they're just bulking it up with some sort of fiber. Um, and then probably using some sort of sweetener that's, you know, an alternate alternative sweetener like stevia or monk fruit or something. Um, but look at you pulling out your food journal so that we can easily find the culprits. I know. Is that just wonderful? <laughs> and it's getting so easy to journal. I just sometimes forget. But the other thing that's really helpful is taking pictures of my meals before I eat them. I even went out the other day for Mary's birthday and my sister's birthday. And as we were at the table, I just take a picture before I eat it. And then later I can go back if I don't if I don't get a chance to journal that day. And also I'm working with Jeff Cotterman and I sent him pictures of my meal, of every meal that I eat. And that's been helping me a lot too. So consider doing that, you know, just get your camera, take a picture of the food that you're eating. And then later on, you can get it on your journal and it really helps you to look for trends. So for anybody out there who likes the idea of the ribeye from Aldi or wherever you go, um, and I have compared the prices from Aldi and compared it to the price at Costco. And I think Aldi is just about the same price as the Costco. Um, What I do with mine is I, I take it out of the refrigerator, I take it out of the package, I dry it off uh, an hour before I want to cook it, 
and I dry it off and then I put oil and I season it, usually salt and pepper. Sometimes I like to use a little um, chop house steak seasoning from Urban Accents, but that I'm sure, you know, other natural say, you know, spices or so whatever, I'm sure it's got a little sugar in it. Um, but I put that on both sides and I let it sit out for an hour. And then I heat up an iron skillet, but it doesn't have to be an iron skillet. I get that nice and hot with some oil and butter. And when that gets to really hot, I sear the steak for two minutes on one side, flip it over, sear it on two for two minutes on the other side. And then I, and I time those two minutes. I don't just walk around thinking, oh, that's about two minutes. I time it. And then I put it in the oven, a 350 degree oven, which if you put the oven on at 350. When you start your searing, you're usually, your oven's usually up to 350 in about five minutes. So anyway, after they're seared, throw it in the oven at 350, depending on the thickness of the steak, somewhere between five minutes to seven minutes. And, you know, it's a quick meal. I mean, that can't take more than 15 minutes to put together, except for you guys. You don't have to take it out of the oven, but the more well done you like your steak, I mean, out of the refrigerator, um, the more well done you like your steak, you should definitely take it out of the refrigerator because taking it out of the refrigerator brings it to room temperature and makes it cook more evenly. If you're cooking it from cold and you're only cooking it for seven minutes or eight minutes total, five minutes, you know, two, two and five. So nine minutes total that you may still have a little cool center in there if it's right out of the refrigerator. Yeah, I took mine out for about two hours and put it in the microwave so just to store it so that my kitty Charlie wouldn't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> and then how long do you usually cook yours? And are I you cook, grilling it outside? No, I was, I, it was too cold to go outside and walk yeah. to the grill. <laughs> in San Diego, it was 60 something. And I thought, Oh my God. So um, I just did it in a um, ceramic pan and I put olive oil in it and then I cooked it um on like medium high, I cooked it for about three minutes on one side. And then it might've been a little more like four minutes. I didn't time the first side, but when I turned it over and it was looking pretty, oh, and I had a lid also on the, on the pan. Um, I turned it over and then I did time it for three minutes on that side. And then I let it sit in the pan for a few minutes and then let it rest for about, you know, three more minutes. Also, it was delicious. So yeah, you have to let it rest too, because that gets the juices flowing back through the steak and makes it tender again. Uh, otherwise, your juices just run out. All right. So um, what's your plan for eating today? Um, I'm going to throw away the bread um, that <laughs> I have left. <laughs> and I'm going to eat um, steak and homemade blue cheese dressing for um, my first meal. Um, and then for my second meal, I'm going to eat um, some tuna salad that I made and um, on some lettuce with probably like some cheese wisps, little baked cheese wisps. That's all I'm, I'm going to try to do two meals today. If I get hungry again, I'll probably have a little bit of chicken broth. And um, also remember, Cami, um, you know, chaffles can be your friend if you're looking for that harder, you know, like a bread consistency. So chaffles, for anybody who doesn't know, Google it. Um, it's an egg. A, a lot of people, one recipe is just egg and one egg, one whole egg and um, some mozzarella cheese. I think a half a cup of mozzarella cheese or maybe a quarter of a cup of mozzarella cheese. You know, mi mix it together and then you put it in a mini uh, waffle, a round mini waffle, the mini dash, I think is what it's called. It makes a nice little round uh, chaffle. And, you know, that takes probably five minutes to make too. You got to heat up your your mini dash waffle chaffle machine or waffle machine. But, you know, that way you could put your your tuna salad on there or have that with your steak. And that should make two chaffles, that recipe. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll Thanks see you soon. Watching. Bye. Take good care. Go keto. <laughs> Bye.